Hello guys and welcome to a brand new video. Today I'm here with Shaman King episode number 35. Okay, the previous episode. Uh, Ren came back, uh, Jun brought him back to life and um, he in like you know in his near death state he was kind of able to come into um, uh, like an understanding of his own like you know like the faults that he had did before all the bad things that he did and he was able to acknowledge that and was able to come to uh what do you call it an understanding that yeah like i have done wrong and but from now on like i'll try to be better that type of thing and he also like you know like he he went through quite a bit of character development in that previous episode because i thought he would actually be angry at um you know yo because he basically sacrificed his uh, way of becoming a shaman just for him which obviously he did not want but he accepted that pretty easily and like you know like i was like okay that's good you know because he actually took um like you know did, did not overreact on, on that whole matter and he was able to take uh you know like uh yo's intentions in good faith and uh, all that stuff you know and uh, that was the first beginning portion um then we get to the next part where we see horo horo uh, still kind of you know struggling with the whole fact that yo won't be in the shaman fight anymore and his own powerlessness and uh, you know like we see the iceman getting bullied by the house minions uh, two of them and <clears throat> they're immensely strong uh, especially the big guy you know after who almost came back after death and the other guy as well who also has gone through a death like in a similar life death situation here um, we get to meet Horohoro's dad who shows that Furioku is not everything and you should like you know since this is the survival of the fittest you should always try to not give up and Horohoro was able to understand that so even with lower Furioku he like, you know he's he has decided to try to uh, go against the other guy and here we get introduced to a new term Reiroku which I had a little bit of misunderstanding about in the previous episode I, I misunderstood it in a big way uh, thanks to the comments I understand what it is now you know Furioku and Reiroku the like you know the interconnection between those two like um, like Reiroku is like spirit energy of the uh, spirit and um, <clears throat> if Reiroku is immense and Furioku is less then it will probably like you know you, you can like you know perform oversoul but you will probably not be able to control it and it will go berserk something like that and like the amount of Furioku uh, should be equal or, or almost equal to the amount of Ryoku his spirit has so it's something like that so yeah I was able to understand that so okay so anyways let's get started uh, with this episode this is episode 35 so yeah i'll be putting in the subtitles and the timer here sync it to whichever is your preference and let's get started all right so here's the countdown three two one go all right let's see Oh, trapped him. Yeah, okay. Mm -hmm. Yep. All right. Now, I've been, like, you know, like, in the opening, I can see one thing that, like, here in this scene, we can see, obviously, Horo Horo is kind of going to change. And then we also see Chocolove, and I really like his new look in the opening, like, here. Like, you know, with the shades and everything. Uh, I'm guessing he's also probably going to go through a drastic change. And his strength will also increase. And I'm really looking forward to meeting the Gan I think Gandhara, that was their name. 
because they're another one of the big powers of you know this anime like obviously one of them is Jan, another one obviously how and the other one is the gandharas Okay. <laughs> okay. Oh, okay, yeah. His dream. Yeah. One at a time, but will that work? Okay. 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 Okay, this is a trap. All right, here we go. Wait, one thing I'm kind of I didn't know this. You can make contract with other people's spirit as well, like I was not aware of that. Like, like this. Like he's changing. I'm guessing mm, you need the spirit's permission or something like that. All right. Use the water to. Okay. Good. Yeah. Oh. Oh, wait. Okay. Oh, great. He can just reattach them. Interesting um, power he has. Like, you know, like making different... Um... Whoa. Wait, what? Yeah, what? Oh, wait, he... Oh my god! <laughs> Wait. Um should you Yeah, okay. There you go. Okay, now I was really not aware of the fact that you can just use... Wait, what? What did... Oh! Okay. Each of them to control them, okay. Yeah. Do you have any phone? <laughs> Call them. Um, wait. Oh no. Oh! Is this... 
This is Jan. No, who is that? Um, that's for a completely different reason, you know? <laughs> he doesn't even react. Yeah. Yeah. Um, the subtitles are a bit weird. They're calling him Joko. I don't know why. Oh, that was Lyserk. Okay. Oh my god. No, I don't think so. Wait, just about. Oh, he's alive. That was Lyser, wasn't it? Yeah. Okay. Okay. So it was not Lysag, it was someone else. Oh, was it Marco? Oh yeah, that's true. So it is Lysag. Wait. Oh my god. Okay, that is his power, that means. Like, not morphine. Like, morphine is with him. Oh. Killing. Ah, uh, yeah. Hmm. Uh. Burial club. Oh, yeah, they're going to die. Okay, like, it's like they need that much much amount of preparation and determination. That yeah, we're here to die. We can die any time. X armory. Oh. Okay, wait, so what will happen to morphine? Like... So... <laughs> Just ignored him.
Yeah. Uh, yeah, that's hmm. Okay Oh no! Oh my god! Oh great! Ah, uh, can we get a break? Like what? <laughs> Broken mayor. That's his name. I don't. Okay. Ah. Uh. Okay. We need. I think we're going to see Ren's power now. I really want to see how strong he is now. <laughs> Uh, do. Oh! Yeah. True, the cycle of revenge. Mm. I don't think so, that's gonna work. Wait, that might work. Yeah, true. It'll continue. Yeah, that's what he needs to realize, you know, especially Lyserk. What? Oh my god. Oh no. Oh wait. Oh. Oh yeah, Ren is here. Like what was I even? <laughs> really? That was also part of your calculations? Yeah, you're sacrificing your own people. <laughs> yeah. Oh, he's okay. That's Okay, that's his. All right, J a gin. I was just asking that. What happened to her? Oh my god. Wait. Oh. Okay. Wait, then how can he have a second? I don't know. I feel something is wrong. What? Oh my god, Ru is in trouble.
Oh! Oh, <laughs> that was a nice way to land. <laughs> No, he's going to help Ryu, I think. Yeah. Oh, God. Okay. Hmm. Oh, this is... Uh. <laughs> Rich said that's his name. <laughs> Serum and Roots, the names are a bit difficult to remember. What? What? Oh, yeah, because it's a gin. <laughs> what is this? It's afterlife or something? <laughs> no. It's probably on the way. Oh, wait, this is. Is this related to Gandharas? <laughs> Whoa! Oh my god! Yeah, they're here! Okay, here we go! I'm, I was really waiting for this. Yep. It is the Gandharas. Okay, here we go. Wow. Oh my god. Yep. Oh. Him. <laughs> Wait. <laughs> oh, I'm I, I'm thinking she's talking about yo. Hmm. Oh. Oh no, wait, what? Oh my god, what's even happening here? Oh. 
Oh no, I think the people who killed his dad. Oh no. Oh my god, I was not expecting that. Wow, this episode really, um, I have to say, really focuses on the whole cycle of hatred and cycle of revenge. Like, we can see, like, uh, the way, like, you know, in the beginning only, Ryo says that if you do something, you're going to get it back eventually. And they're going to do it. So no need for you to, like, you know, involve yourself anymore in this life circle. This is our battle, let us do it. And, um... Like that in itself, like has been imp being implied from the beginning in this episode, and again in the end we see that thing again comes into action. That um, Chocolab goes back to find all of his, uh, you know, people dead because they before they killed um, the dad, and that's like the, again the whole cycle of revenge comes. And as far as I remember. Um, now, like, you know, currently these guys have, have been completely changed. They have been completely, like, you know, reformed. They're very good now. But I do remember that before, they, even, even they, I think, as far as I can remember, they, they killed the old man, didn't they? Yeah. Yeah, I remember it now. Uh, Chocolov's uh, uh, teacher, the one who, like, you know, helped him. They even killed him. Uh, but after that, you know, after seeing Chocolov's determination, everything, and I'm guessing after that they changed, you know, when we see them coming to cheer for Chocolov, okay, that's the end, in the shaman fight, they, they have completely changed by then. But before that, they used to do nasty stuff like this. And I'm guessing one of them was probably killing, um, um, I don't remember the kid's name, but, you know, their, their dad. So, yeah. Wow, okay. Um, one thing I have to say, I'm not sure, but I feel like this episode was kind of fast-paced. It might be just me, but it felt like it was kind of all over the place, you know? Like, like in the beginning, there's something was happening, and then suddenly it, it goes to another thing, and then another thing, and another thing. Like, so many scenarios in, like, one episode. I'm not sure if they're rushing, or if this is how it went in the manga, but I feel like they are kind of picking up the pace a little bit. I might be wrong though, it, it might be just me, or maybe this is how it's in the manga, I'm not sure. But yeah, it was not that much, but I kind of felt there was a little bit, you know, a little bit um, rush. Okay, anyways, um, so yeah, here in this, uh, in the beginning, we see the fight between um, Horo Horo and um, uh, the guy, the Le Lego guy. <laughs> and here, I am not I'm still not sure so you can just use other people's um, spirits just like that is it that easy like I'm guessing um, if the spirits themselves allow you to is that how it goes like for example if these people were <gasps> excuse me these people were knocked out the Icemen so obviously the spirits must have thought at that moment that yeah we need to help Horo Horo otherwise none of us will survive so is that why you know they lend them their hand and you can just you know take help from them because of that is that how it goes because i think this is the first time i've seen anyone using someone else's uh you know spirit so maybe like uh i'm guessing uh probably they were able to sync up so quickly because you know both of both horo horo and the iceman they're like you know like accustomed to cold weather and everything maybe maybe their you know affinities were a lot more similar that's why Horo Horo was use, able to use them uh, you know as his own oversoul but yeah now I love the way he combined the, all the attacks you know different uh, all of the different uh, spirits had their own specialities and he kind of used all of them in like you know quick succession and uh, syncing it very quickly and you know, in a very creative manner to capture that guy and defeated him. So, yeah, and then obviously, like, we see how he went out of Furyoku and he kind of, like, you know, like, let his guard down a little bit. The guy, the, 
the big guy he tries to attack him but gets defeated by Lyserk. Now here is another part that is actually a little bit concerning. Um, I don't know why I feel something is going on with Morphine. Um, I'm still not sure because you know like he We see uh, Lyserk use his new uh, spirit ally well, okay, what was the name? Uh, just a second. Let me go and check. Okay, Marco goes to the ex armory and Zelel, Zelel, the eighth angel, angel, I think. Just a sec. Yeah, the eighth angel, Zelel. Now. <laughs> um i'm not sure what like how how can he even take another spirit ally with him he already has morphine and like that's one thing that was actually bothering me and yo actually asks that question on uh when you know they were running away from um house minions he asks him where what happened to morphine and well uh, Lyser is like, oh, I have her right here with me. Uh, obviously, I won't do anything because she's like, you know, uh, the, some, something that my dad gave to me, you know, my most prized possession. Now, and then, you know, like, um, Yo is smiling then and she, he's like, okay, that's fine. Now, then how did he integrate, you know, like, you know, like make a contract with Zelel? Like, how does that work even? I'm not sure. But I don't know, I still have a bad feeling about the whole situation of Lyserk and Morphine and Zellel, all that stuff. But um, Yo doesn't seem that much concerned after that, after that scene, you know, when he asks, where is your spirit ally, where is Morphine? And he shows him, him that. He doesn't seem much concerned after that. So I'm guessing everything is fine. Maybe it's just me thinking too much. But yeah okay and here's the thing uh, as i said the whole theme of this episode was revenge you know like getting back what you did and i feel like lyserk is one of the most i i like yeah obviously like lyserk is the person who which this uh applies to the most because you know the whole thing the whole lyserk's uh revenge thing you know like mom and dad uh, because of that death he wants to defeat how like that in itself like uh, is one of the biggest um definition of like you know this the theme of this episode now i i do like you know as i've said i've, I've said this before as well i do understand lyserk's you know like frustration and everything but you know like i feel like uh actually giving up your own ideals and like you know walking the wrong path not wrong path but not the moral path to actually get that revenge is a bit you know it's something that you should probably not do because you lost you lose sight of yourself like that's what um Lysak is doing here you know he's he, we can see that he is kind of suffering like you know like he when we see marco actually training him and everything marco keeps like you know pushing these type of like you know their own uh worldview their own ideals they, they he keeps pushing it into lyserk he's like oh you have to like you know like what did he say like you have to change your your heart has to accept and lyserk is always telling but no i cannot do it i'm i'm still like you know i i know what i should do i know that i should like you know not think much about yo but since he's my friend i cannot like you know i, I cannot just do that and Marco is trying to push the whole, like, you know, I, the ideal that he has on, on top of him. And Lysak is uh, suffering because of that. And he's doing stuff that he himself, his heart, like, you know, doesn't want to. Just because of revenge. So that's the thing that I think is the, the, something that you should never do. Like, revenge... Obviously, you should not, like, you know, indulge in revenge. And if you still do that, if you still try to take revenge, try not to go so deep into that whole revenge thing that you lose sight of yourself, 
your own ideals, your own rules, their own set of rules, morality that you have. If you forget that and start walking a very bad path, you know, to just for the sake of revenge, it's it's actually very um it's not something that you you should do. Because after you've completed the revenge, you'll be only be left with all the bad stuff you've done, done, did. And who knows, maybe, like, you know, maybe along the path, along the path that you've walked, hmm, just to take your own revenge, you probably made a lot of people unhappy who themselves will get their own, like, you know, a vendetta against you. And they'll start walking the path of revenge, just like you did once and it's it's like a it's like a cycle it's it, it's it's like a disease that keeps spreading like whenever you walk the path of revenge it's wh whichever path that you're walking on you know it, it keeps spreading from there and it affects a lot of other people as well so yeah like i don't know and i, I think yo is yo you know like yo really doesn't doesn't want that obviously he doesn't want that like who would want that and Isaac is one of their friends so Yo is concerned but at the same time you know he is like he knows that he can't change Isaac's mind he needs to realize it himself so I'm not sure if he'll ever realize it probably will but yeah like like I don't know like um I have nothing like you know uh, what can I say like I've I have no problem with the X-Laws you know, Jen is Jan is okay. I kind of like her as well. All the other members as well. But Marco is the only person that I really don't like among the X laws. Like, um, I don't know if he'll get a redemption or maybe we'll get some kind of backstory which we get to see why he's like this now. Or I'm not sure. Maybe in the future. But for now, like you know, all this time that I've been seeing him, um, obviously I understand that he must have gone through a lot of bad stuff. You know, but the things that he does i'm i'm really not you know like I'm, i really don't like that and the way he does stuff it's 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 not you know like but yeah as i said it's it's, it's just my preference i guess and as i said maybe in the future i'll change my mind when i get to know more about him when they actually tell us more about him like we know nothing about marco like we just know that yeah he he's also someone who probably um you know had a very bad past uh, because of how and he is that's why he's working with John to uh, like, you know to destroy how that's all we know nothing else so you know maybe we'll get maybe I'll be actually able to sympathize with him if we uh, get some backstory or more context but for now yeah I really don't uh, you know like him that much um, anyways um so yeah that was that Okay, um, then, uh, then the whole thing starts again, you know, the cycle of revenge, uh, these people comes attacking them, uh, you, like, you, know, you wanted to tell something to them, but it gets interrupted midway, and, you know, the fight starts, Lyserk is like, okay, I'll go help Ryu, um, Yo is like, don't go, because if you go, you'll probably not be able to keep yourself, you know, like, you'll probably kill them. So if you do that, some other people will come and go after you again and this cycle will continue. So just don't go there if you don't know how to, like, you know, stop yourself. And yeah, that was that. Now, as I said, like, I feel like something is wrong with Lysark here. The whole thing with morphine is really weird. I don't know what is happening, but there's like a nagging thing, you know, which is kind of making me feel as if something is actually wrong in that scene. Like he does show morphine to Yo and Yo does smile after that. But I don't know, maybe I'm just thinking too much. But yeah, that was that. Then, um, you know, we get to know that Ryu is fighting uh, House Minions and he's getting beaten up. And oh, and then we in the middle, we get a little bit of a, a scene where we see uh, Mikisa and uh, the kids. <laughs> and I mean, like, you know, making a barbecue. And the golem is shown. So yeah, and then we again get you know transferred back to the fight. Ryu is almost defeated. He's almost going to die. But in comes the Gandhara, and 
yeah like obviously their name kind of like you know like uh it's very uh, apparent after listen like you know, hearing their name is they are related to buddhism and you know buddhism means non-violence and that's why they don't want anyone fighting and you know pointless uh, bloodshed all these things they really don't like and the main um uh, leader the, i think that uh, that girl was the main leader she says something like um you know even though uh you like you know you're fighting you are um where is it okay here it is uh she says that <coughs> ryunasuke okay how does she know my name all that we dislike futile conflict and slaughter um yet we saved you because we heard the wish of a compassionate heart to help you it's most probably yo wasn't it yeah because you know like yo was like running back to help uh, ryu and um yeah that's what probably you know he was probably like wishing he was like oh my god let ryu be okay let ryu, ryu be okay uh just like you know keep him alive until i go there like you know i'll, I'll then i'll obviously take control of the situation and help him like you know it's probably wishing in his heart and the gandhara were probably nearby they heard that uh, especially the the leader and she came and helped you because of that and now here's one thing that i actually realized in this episode i feel like the gandhara and yo will probably get along the best out of all the other different teams for example the x-laws like how's like you know obviously how they're like enemies like but you know the x-laws and them and all the other people i think Gandh the gandhara will probably be the best um uh, what can i say like can become the best uh ally for yo because yo himself his philosophy his way of doing stuff is very similar to gandhara in a, in a lot of ways especially because he does not want futile com conflict he is like you know as 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 she said a compassionate soul and he you know like he he, he like he's he's a person like that like just like how the gandharas are i think yo is very similar to that so i'm guessing they'll probably get along the best you know the gandhara and yo so who knows we'll see so yeah and now here, here's the thing we still don't know what gandhara's actual goal is like obviously they wants to become the shaman king uh and there's one thing that is kind of interesting here she says that we don't like futile conflict which means like if it's futile they does not like like it's not that they don't like like obviously no one likes conflict that's what i'm trying to say i'm saying that it's not that they don't engage in conflict they don't engage in futile conflict and bloodshed the conflict the fight that they are fighting here and in the like you know shaman fight those are not futile because those actually have a goal behind them they she like, you know they probably want to become win and she wants to be the shaman king that's like the goal that they have so that's the whole thing here i think like it's the, the the keyword here is futile like no futile conflict or slaughter so it's a little bit different from complete non-violence i guess but yeah and I'm, I'm 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 thinking like you know like yo is also kind of like that he also does not like futile conflict he's definitely going to fight if someone actually harms his friends or there is like a reason for him to fight he's definitely going to do it that's why i'm saying like you know yo and the gandhara will probably get along well the best i might be wrong though <laughs> let's just wait uh but no i i think i'm not wrong because you know like she herself said that uh because a compassionate soul asked for help we helped you so yeah anyways okay that was that then we get you know like to the next scene where uh chocolate goes to uh meet his friends but yeah um the two kids they have already come and killed all the his friends and again the whole cycle of hatred hatred the whole cycle of revenge comes into motion when the the kid says that um these were the people who killed my dad mm. chocolate actually stops at that moment before that he was like you know filled with rage and he i think that's when he actually realizes that oh these guys they are also probably someone 
who like you know faced the same fate that i faced you know like just like how jokolov lost his master just like that um the same fate so i'm not sure how he's going to do like i feel like uh, the kids probably are still misunderstanding they i think they probably think that jokolov is also one of them and they're probably trying to are going to try to kill him you know but chocolate was not at all like you know involved in all of that you know at that time when they killed uh, the pair uh, the, the father um chocolate was not at all involved with them at that moment so chocolate is like you know in no way related to this so yeah the, that thing is uh, the only thing in the like, you know, chocolate only knows that so I'm guessing in the next episode they'll probably try to attack Chocolat. Chocolat will probably try to stop them. Or I'm I'm not sure. We'll we'll have to wait. And another thing, there are a few things that are actually bothering me here. Number one, how did they know? Um, I feel like that little scene we saw in the be be before, you know, with them in the barbecue, and when uh, you know the the boy, he goes to his sister and he's like, uh, "Come, like you know, uh, the barbecue is ready." Serum, that's the girl's name. She's looking at the uh, golem and there's like a little eye on the golem with obviously Emmet written on top of it. So I'm guessing that scene probably, you know, showed them something, somehow gave them the information that, yeah, this is what happened to your dad and these people are responsible and that's why they went. So that's one thing that's bothering me. Another thing is what happened to Mikihisa? Why is he not with them? I'm guessing they probably like you know uh, just rushed out with the golem and Mikisa probably wasn't able to follow them quickly enough and he's probably on the way so something like that and uh, yeah so yeah that was it that was my reaction to uh, Shaman King episode number 35 so yeah if you guys enjoyed this video be sure to press the like button subscribe if you're new to the channel or you haven't subscribed and comment down below anything you want to say anything you want to let me know and i'll definitely check them out so yeah that's it thank you guys for watching and i'll see you guys um next week with another episode of shaman king until then goodbye and have a nice day